Hello, everybody. Hi, hi from Ankita. Hi from Education Street. And this is going to be our 10th uh, webinar, if I'm not wrong, from the series of, uh, of uh, topics that we have started with. We have still more five webinars to go. And uh, that's the interesting part. So today's topic is computer engineering. And I welcome all of you who have it, who have been, who are there in this webinar room. So as as being today's host, I would just love to introduce myself to the new attendees uh, so that they are aware who I am and where we come from. So I'm Ankita. I'm founder of Education Street and I am myself an IT engineer. I then worked as a software engineer with Tech Mahindra. Post that, I gave my GMAT and I went for my MBA to University of Leeds, UK. And I also did finance as my uh, specialization. After which, in 2009, I was recruited by uh, British Petroleum, which is one of the very big company in London. And I worked there for a year, year and a half almost. And 2010 was my time to decide what I really want to do in my career. And that's where I also, meanwhile, had accomplished a uh, diploma in council with UK council. And with that in mind and with that approach and with that thought, I returned back. I left my job in 2010. I returned back in uh, India, Mumbai, and I started Education Street from one office to three offices now in Mumbai. And that's been my journey for last 10 years with, you know, few students to almost 5,000 plus students and that's where the journey has been stronger and stronger with great experiences and great exploration and that's how I'm going to be the host for today's session wherein I can speak to you about various career paths for you if you are from computer engineering or you're from any other kind of field. So this is a session not to explain you technicalities of computer engineering but basically if you're from electronic electrical computer engineering software engineering wherever you are to identify varied kind of career paths and that's what i'm going to discuss and that's what i've been discussing in my past sessions as well so as we always start with the agenda so the agenda is quite simple computer engineering so the basics i will i always start with the basics because i to set a foundation because there are different kind of people from different genres and different uh, education background hence we will talk the basics also hardware and software skills vlsi and cyber security so guys in my initial sessions of electrical engineering we have already covered uh embedded systems we have covered telecommunication uh networking is left but networking is one of the topic and today we are going to talk about uh, robotics we have finished and now we are going to talk about is computer engineering so what was left in this genre and this domain was vlsi and cyber security and that's what exactly i'm going to cover for people who have not attended previous sessions you can join us you can uh, subscribe us to on youtube we have the entire recording there so in telecommunication yesterday i covered not only about 5g iot and i also covered about blockchain technology these are the new career paths and new avenues which can you can progress further with uh, in embedded also I spoke in depth about IOT so that is where you can go and look out for those areas and in robotics of course a lot of avenues like AI ML robotics and all these perspectives have been discussed there so I would love that you can go out and check those areas job salaries and examples and at the end the importance of profile building and that's what the major agenda of the session is so the basic of computer engineering computer engineering is a branch of engineering that integrates several fields of computer science electronic engineering required to develop computer hardware and software so this engineer works on both aspects and hence there's a wide array of concepts which he or she can expose himself for right this field of engineering not only focuses on how computer systems themselves work, but also how they integrate into a bigger picture. So guys, just a very simple example, which I want to start with here, that if I'm a computer engineering student, I have 
a lot of avenues okay but the most common and the most basic could be that let me give you an example i am an it company or i am xyz company i am a new startup okay i am going to start a startup with say around 30 people now these 30 people will come to work in the office and infrastructure but there has to be an computer engineer who can make that infrastructure available to those 30 people so not only setting up the computer systems but also you know uh, you know networking having cyber security for it better efficiency better server positions data centers backup systems this is what all a computer engineering brings into any company and hence that is the most basic one which i'm talking about and you can understand by this that how important it is that any business which starts with his or her setup a computer engineer is required not only that guys you as a computer engineering student can work as a freelancer with the skills of hardware and software that you have let me give you an example again on this so suppose i am a startup which is going to function on say a uh, production of mask which is very very you know uh, right now happening in this case so i have absolute no absolutely no clue on the technology the networking or the systems which are required in this case also have to secure things in this i can be a freelancer a computer engineer which makes the setup possible for new startups smes and medium scale companies and stuff so i can have my own organization i can start my own company on my own terms there is not a lot of investment that is required by you because initially you can be the ground work engineer who actually goes and places systems connects them makes the networking connects pr uh, printers and xyz creates the server the backup systems and everything but this is only possible if you are aware and you have explored yourself and you have actually done projects internships to learn those things area so a lot of time i'm talking about careers but you have to understand these careers can also make you up someone who can start your own businesses i have been having certain students from computer engineering who when they were in the second year itself started their own projects of actually going out on these sites and working upon it why do you do that is it that because you know you really have nothing else to do no you do that because you really want to have the groundwork set you want to know the fundamentals of this area because there's nothing more you can you can only learn when you actually do hands on our engineering curriculum provides theory but hands on is missing and we all agree to it and that's why a lot of us are dumb witted computer engineers with just a degree in hand but absolutely zero knowledge about even connecting a single system to a router or a server and that's how bad quality computer engineers are coming in the market but there are mass computer engineers guys our, our population is a major major crisis we beat we have lakhs of computer engineers which come in market it is the most what do you say common uh, degree which a lot of students agree upon but if you are a shining star you can be among the best and you can get the best quality job in this case and also you can make the best out of it so that is why computer engineering has very basic implementations and there is a lot of as a uh, growth prospects right from starting your own business into it now coming to computer engineering of course it's a part of electrical it has more components of electrical and hence i'm just talking about this because it is a clarity which i want to set up on everybody so it is a mixture of computer science electronic optical and power engineering so an electrical engineer or say a computer engineer with a knowledge of computer and hardware can work in lot of areas a power knowledge is there then that engineer is very useful for industrial setups industrial system setups so this is where i'm talking about so this genre or this computer engineering thing is something which is applicable 
everywhere from a small company to a bigger company so computer the design and control of computing devices with the application of electrical systems so i need to understand this electronic so the design of circuits that use the electronic magnetic properties of electrical components such as resistors capacitors inductors diodes and transistors to achieve a particular functionality let me ask every electronic engineer here on this platform how many times have you experimented with these concepts we all know about ic's integrated cir circuits resistors capacitors but have we actually gone about creating a simple application also about it no we don't do that because we think we will do it when we get that as an assignment or in the lab but nothing out of curiosity curiosity is where you will build your fort and that's exactly what you need to do guys and that is what i want to awaken you for power the generation transmission and distribution and electricity and the design devices such as transformers electrical gener generators electric motors high voltage engineering and power electronics so these are all combined together as to be a computer engineer and i hope this is where you're relevant please make yourself relevant today guys because this computer engineering is utilized everywhere our everyday consumer electronics is based on this fundamental so if you have knowledge for it even maintenance company is what you can start of your own wherein you are helping yourself to maintain the electronic goods which these companies or which clients have in this case so there's a lot of prospect which you can build upon in this case so of course there are two types of engineers one which work on the hardware side and the second which work on the software side and hence it a blend of both computer Computer engineering is also a platform or a bridge for a lot of students. So suppose if I am an electronic engineer and I want to study further the software, the computer science of it, I can go for a master's in computer engineering wherein I pick up a lot of software degrees or a lot lot of software courses in this case and vice versa i am a computer science student and i want to learn hardware and hardware languages i push myself to go for computer engineering so that i can get the blend of both so this is where the chemistry works a computer engineer who works behind the hardware and the software of it how possible this is right guys that we have all forgotten that a system won't work if there is no hardware or a right ic or a right transistor or a right microcontroller back but somehow we have missed that somehow we are all running behind the major new jargons and we have missed upon that all these systems all these embedded systems all these devices will not function if there is no right hardware so basically if i am someone who is very curious and who wants to learn the technology about hardware i better get myself equipped with those skills and if i'm already studying computer engineering i start experimenting with those so i have always been counseling students for computer engineering and stuff and to be very honest and amused i have always seen very lesser interest towards hardware i do not know why but could be you can tell me why what makes you not be excited about hardware but of course there is immense interest towards software and software technologies said and done might be because they they think that's where you uh, invent something or you create something and stuff that way that's absolutely fine but do not miss the boat of hardware as well because you would be surprised when i'm saying this that there are more number of job postings in hardware and there are lesser takers for it i was amused myself when i was studying these facts i found out that on indeed there are more job postings and if i talk about in india right now there are more job postings for an hardware engineer but there are lesser takers in the market now that really surprised me and that really happened to make me think over it and of course i could think that because after thousands of students i have you know uh, uh, counseled and mentored for i have realized there were very very few who actually wanted to go for hardware 
I was very surprised and I got to know that this is because it's herd mentality. We all, all give importance towards software because that's what is spoken the most. That's what is covered the most. And that's where our seniors, our, uh, you know, our neighbors, our cousins have have been to and that's why we flourish into those areas but we miss other areas wherein absolutely we would be capable to take charge and do most out of it so this is also food for thought in case if you're interested i have few things which you can go ahead and do so basically let me talk about a computer hardware engineer this girl is where she's sitting on a data center so every data center all companies have data centers they have big data centers and they all require computer hardware engineer to actually see the progress and the health checkups of the systems and thing because if anything goes wrong that's a huge cost every company pays for it and are you realizing the importance of hardware here again guys i'm not talking about software because i have already spoken about a lot of it in my first seminar from coding to a lot of others as well so i'm not going to talk about the importance of c c plus plus java python blah 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 because this is already what i've spoken so what i want to take this time out is to talk about hardware because a data center or a system or a company cannot work if there are no systems behind it because they are the support system as well so in the equation of hardware and software software there are a lot of talents but in hardware there are lesser talent because might be we also look at it at a very lower or i don't know there's a different perception around it but it is important so a computer hardware engineer basically analyzes user needs and recommend appropriate hardware. So as I gave you an example, that if there is any company who wants to set up an uh, organization for 30 people, he needs to have a computer engineer who can take that problem or and give solution. So here this girl is going to give solution to you if you're going to set up a data center. So who will let you know that how many PCs, how many systems, how many servers, how many routers of which quality of which chips of which intel category blah 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 would require you and me would not understand it because you don't know the right products in the market and you don't know what your requirement would be the best suitable for so that is why a computer hardware engineer comes in picture she participates in the design and development of electronic circuits and assemblies so this together brings balance the median annual salary in US is basically 1,400 and 600 sorry 14,600 dollars and that's why I say that a hardware engineer is equally in the same position of a software engineer but we are not seeing it because we are missing it because there is everybody who has eye on software behind it so uh, I just want to open up few eyes people who are interested towards this side you may jump the board and the best part about computer hardware engineer is that apart from working for some company you can absolutely open up your own organization and venture wherein you are a consultant or an analyst or a maintenance guy for the organizations which already are functioning on these parameters so that is the beauty of computer hardware engineer now, as I spoke about software developer, of course, I've spoken a lot about it. Please refer to the coding, the first session webinar. It's there on the YouTube as well. You can learn more about the languages and the software development platforms. So what does a software developer do? Of course, very simple, develops and tests software with varied platforms, varied languages. It solves, it tries to solve the problem of the client. So it develop upgrades for application, monitor quality and performance of applications. So this is what a software engineer or a software developer does. It works behind a problem, tries to get a software work and develop develop and set up that software by continuous testing behind it so apart from software development of course software testing is also a very big area which you should learn because once you know the loopholes once you understand the loopholes you can cover those loopholes by developing a better and a stronger software even testing is one of the most neglected and most 
and uh, you know um, uh, i mean it's not in which a lot of students demand to do that because it's set in their mind that it is not very uh, 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 promising or very enriching but i would say from my experience when i was in uh, tech mahindra as a software developer there was much more field coming to me from a software tester because they actually gave me an idea about where my software is going to fail or where it is failing and then i could develop the most you know robust software in this case so a testing guy is equally important in a software company and they equally paid as well a typical median wage is 110000 per year in par with hardware so guys as i said a software and a hardware is important for any company in this case so don't miss that and give a thought again now of course computer engineering have lot of areas starting with embedded system so as i spoke i'm not going to repeat the thing so please refer to the embedded system area which is again a very good career path in which i have already spoken about iot internet of things so please do refer to that so today i'm going to talk about two very different career paths which we have not covered till date so first one is vlsi 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 design that's always been a buzzword for any electrical or electronic or a computer engineer so what is it about so basic definition very large scale integration thousands of trans uh, transistors are integrated together to form chip not only that it also requires lot of coding and designing skills to make a chip successful to be released into the market at that's what vlsi semiconductors are vlsi needs more electronic knowledge vlsi is divided into the front end and back end so there is a lot of possibility of learning new tools and platforms for those every electronic device has a vlsi you know uh, my semiconductor in it so consumer electronic mobiles chips sim cards even every each of our mobile which has a sim card is a vlsi product satellite communication chips on a lot of things so it is a very common area and that is why it is required in mass and it is required in a lot of way there is a lot of debate which i came across while preparing this uh, ppt that is vlsi dead and there were few of them who actually said that you know there is no progress happening on this area however it is not always that the progress is not happening it is also about how this serves as a backbone to an industry so just imagine if there is no improvisation or there is nothing which uh, is done or innovated or invented behind these ics and these uh, semiconductors and stuff all what we progress however intelligent machines we make through artificial intelligence and machine learning this will not survive so that is why vlsi was very bluntly said it can never go out of fashion it can never go dead because it has to exist to support the other progressions which we are seeing in ai machine learning and robotics so it is the oxygen required now what are the engineering skills or vlsi skills to build upon so if i am a computer engineer and i want to experiment whether i really really understand or i want to like or i want to make my career into vlsi i need to do few things first and foremost one should be passionate about electronics and pre- primarily should be good in digital electronics that's where vlsi engineers are used the most good in coding focusing on verilog or vhdl these are the hardware languages guys which are the most proficient ones and there is actual certifications available for you if you really want to experiment on vlsi designs and skills and be an engineer into it until and until i do and i step into it i would not know whether i'm good at it or not so a lot of time we fear and we don't do anything we don't always want to be successful guys we want to make our mistakes to understand whether we like it or not but for that you need to give yourself a chance and hence experimenting with new platforms new languages new certifications new projects and actually learning from it and failing to learn from it is what we should be looking forward for good so we 
DHDL, the food form is very high integrated circuit hardware description language. That's what these two Verilog and VHDL are hardware programming languages. You can start with that. Verilog is also a hardware description language. This helps to describe any digital hardware, automate the designs of ICs. So this is what Verilog is for. Now coming to good knowledge on FPC, uh, FPGA circuits and good understanding on A. ASIC flow. So these are varied platforms wherein a VLSI engineer needs to learn upon. FPGA is a field programmable gate array. This allows fabrication of ICs. So that is why this is also a platform which helps you to build upon your theory and concepts and experiment with circuits over here. And uh, AS, ASIC is application specific in, uh, integrated circuit wherein you create a circuit uh, IC for a single task so this is actually a good project to work so if i am a computer engineer or an electrical or an electronic engineer i may start do a project in my third year or my second year or my first year on these technologies because that will help me to at least stick one area from my skill sets okay so this is the brilliance about vlsi and this is a starting point for your vlsi engineering skills now coming to job roles so as a vlsi job uh, vlsi expert you can have certain post which you can work as so chip designer now that's very fancy i would say i have a student who actually went for vlsi designing because he was very interested towards it and he now works with intel wherein of course we all know intel is the most major mastermind behind the latest chips and ics and stuff and he is working with a very very good exposure and a designing team there i would very soon have him as a uh, you know as an industry speaker and you would be hearing from him about how vlsi uh, you know can be a great career ahead so that's where you can look out for rf and wireless engineer fabrication engineering as i said if you export yourself into fpga you can work as a fabrication engineering automation engineer power and nano electronic professional nanotechnology is one of the most upcoming technology because everything is trying to get shrinked from cars to a lot of our electronic devices and hence nanotechnology even a sim card guys now what we have is a nano sim from where we started to right now our sim is getting smaller and smaller and in fact with 5g which i mentioned and i spoke with there are talks that we would have an e-sim Oh my God, that sounds really, really fancy. But that's how technologies are evolving. And that's where a VLSI engineer comes in picture. As I mentioned, guys, there are more number of job roles right now in this area, but less takers. This is something very amusing. And that's why I'm sharing it again and again with you. Now coming to the second concept and the second career path, which I want to discuss as a computer engineer, cybersecurity. I was very fascinated about this area even while I was doing my uh, IT engineering and stuff. In fact, I did a lot of projects on this because I was very curious about how things work and how malicious things can go if we are not secured. But when I did it and today, I feel today the importance of cyber security is much more and more just imagine we all do our uh, banking online we have all our data on social media we have mobile wallets we actually do everything online and that means that we have our all our footprints and all our real data online which is at risk if the application that i'm using or if the portal that i'm using or if the business that i'm looking out for is not using cyber security and is not a secured platform it is going to cost me big time right so cyber security is a subsection of the technology industry that focuses on protecting the safety of computer networks electronic devices and digital information from cyber attacks so this is where this concept comes in and again this is also a career path which is in very high need ahead 
let me tell you one very big fact which i have shown in the picture 91% of surveyed consumers believe that apps websites pose a risk to their personal information this is huge guys 91% of us still feel that we are at threat and our uh, information is on threat why is this because we feel there is a lot of cyber attacks which are happening around us and that is why this is the major cornerstone of computer engineering at this point of time if we build big palaces and we do not have security at our palace front gate it is going to be of no use even if we have a huge fort because it would be captured by some unwanted entity and that's how scary it is and that is why cyber security should be your uh you know understanding there are different types of cyber attacks there's malwares which take your information away there's phishing which actually gives you uh you know uh, which makes you feel like it's from the right entity and you give away your uh, details and they snipe your money out there's password attacks your uh, facebook your gmails getting ha hacked and attacked and you know taking the information away man in the middle drive by download malvertising there are wrong ads which gives a feel of whether it's the right one we click on it and we have malware attack on our systems and all of these so guys there's a lot of things which happen each day every time we download we need to be sure that there is nothing that we are taking unwanted in our network and in our system so that is why cyber attacks is more and more important because there are so many kind of threats which we see and there are so many versions of it you know it gets better and better like how virus we're dealing with one kind of virus it started with a smaller this thing and they're getting powerful day by day same where malware phishing technologies password attacks are getting more and more powerful and that is why it is important that we have more cyber at uh, cyber security engineers who also bring out the best possible things so as a cyber security expert role i would be doing these fundamental things i would analyze malware and try to reverse it i would work on cloud computing and cloud security so there are platforms which you need to learn upon i need to have coding skills because that's exactly where i can bring on the best robust software to protect ourselves so firewalls antiviruses these all companies keep on having software engineers and hardware engineers to bring on the best antivirus is possible for the system and the networks solid ground and networking fundamentals so i have to have networking skills also where to place my firewall how to get the networking more robust router servers how to unlock them how to unlock them crypto graphy all of these comes in picture here so basically very high ground on it fundamentals also and understanding the architecture of operating system that's what you would be doing as a cyber security authority person wherein you would be having understanding of hardware and software both so the platforms and tools to learn cyber security so all these tools are good for different domains and hence wide variety are available i have placed eight security skills which you can start with blue vector bricata cloud defender cofens contrast security digital guardian manti and into four sec b sounds very greek and latin but these are the tools which all top mncs used and hence if you have knowledge into them if you have done some certification some project over it i see you being the most valuable proposition for them and they, you would surely surely get jobs even if there is recession or lockdown or whatever so that is why having yourself or upping your game and upping your profile is what is the most important part in this career so this is how thing blue vector uses uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to get intelligent encounters uh, it actually gets uh, malware uh, dissolved uh, very soon so there are different applications for different skills so it depends on what i'm trying to protect i can choose among these eight skills and platforms cloud defender for example works on cloud applications it's very easy to use and all the apps which we normally use use cloud defender as a cyber security protector for our information and our transactions so if 
every day i give almost so many skills and platforms i know we can't do all but i know one thing i can start with one at least and that is what i want to bring that awareness to each one of you i am not going to do all of it i don't want to you know basically get confused what i want to do is i want to build step by step so that at the end i read i reach where i want to and that's what is the beauty so don't get overwhelmed about the kind of things available in the things you know there are so many things around because then you would just sit around and be you know uh, uh, procrastinating but if you agree that okay i will do one thing at a time i'm going to succeed hacking ethical hacking is one of the major skills again required just imagine to protect things we need to first learn how to break those things so that is where the interest comes in i and every company typically hire an ethical hacker to actually test their product and their system their networks their firewalls and everything because i am actually hiring someone to think as a hacker and actually break the system because if i am successful to do it rather than someone third person doing it i can protect my gates in my own style there are a lot of certifications on hacking in fact a lot of engineering schools and bachelors already have hacking groups i triple e have ethical hacking competitions and stuff why do you think they are so common in all the engineering schools because that's where you need to start with but we miss that boat also we think we are not interested we don't want to do it but guys it's actual fun i have myself participated in one of the ethical hacking competition and i really really found myself so overcharged with it because it gave me a real real agenda so there are a lot of certifications available if you want to do there's ethical hacking uh, council which you can take certifications from the basic ones are certified ethical hacker certified threat intelligence analyst licensed penetration tester certified forensic hacker so these are the few basic ones then you keep building upon them and you actually become a master hacker this brings loads and loads of avenues but that requires you first and your mindset so as a counselor and a career advisor i want to tell you that there are a lot of avenues but you're missing it because you're not looking at beyond your normal curriculum and agenda we think that the normal agenda that we clear we would be able to surpass and get a good job sorry guys you might get a good job but that's not what is the only agenda we want a job which really challenges us and gets you where your ikigai is now coming to the top 10 highest paying job titles in cyber security application security engineer director of information security senior security consultant cloud engineer software architect penetration tester risk manager chief information officer security engineer and information manager just imagine so many job postings and how higher you can go as a chief information officer in a company why because you're very very important you are the major guardian of that company so your skills and your uh, understanding and your vision is very important for them and typically of course the salaries are very high from what it starts with so it starts from almost $100,000 to $130,000 with the varied titles which i already mentioned in the past slide so these jobs are very very high paying i have us salaries here but they are equally important at any point of the country any part of the country in any part of the world sorry including india so wherever you decide wherever you want to be it is going to be a very important style i can start by studying at varied areas udemy linda coursera circuit digest you edureka there are a lot of avenues but the best possible avenue could be that i start while i'm in the university studying my bachelors i learn from it i do projects i do internships and at the end i go for a masters in cyber security or a masters in 
computer engineering, which will include VLSI, embedded IoT, and a lot of aspects with it. So a master degree would be your end goal. But while you're in your bachelor, every semester matters. Each semester, you pick one skill, pick one project, implement it. You will have a fort very soon. You will build on your profile. And hence, profile building is what I want to bring on to each one of you that meant that we at education street think this is the most important aspect so profile building mentoring is very very crucial and hence we want to bring that around so this is only for people who want to be a riser so either you rise up or risk it all pbm is surely not for lousy people guys it is as it is very intensive it is customized mentoring program designed to provide you with skills and advantages you need to find a good job or university admission after your bachelor's so there are two avenues after you finish your bachelor's you want to go for a job and want to go for a university for a master's both the cases if i have a very strong profile i know you would make a difference to get where you want to do from the other competition that you see in the market it is offering you a lot of things. So PBM offers you exposure to skills. So as I mentioned, the hacking certifications, uh, cybersecurity skills, how to start about. I think I have so many things and information, but where do I start? We will act as expert and mentor to you. We will set a roadmap of time and a time set and skills and someone who would be behind you to meet those criteria and agendas. So we will pick the technical learnings. We will choose the right certificate for you. We will let you be aware of all the industry trends internships is what also we would be helping you out to get entrepreneurship club and resume building which will eventually be a byproduct of your pbm because if you have done 10 things it is going to show up on your resume so resume building is a byproduct of pbm and that's what we want to do just sitting and completing your engineering or your bachelor is not going to serve the purpose because the world is getting more and more difficult more competitive and more dynamic so we need to have our skills together so who is pbm for it is for people from across engineering disciplines computer engineering electronic power civil wherever you are from it is for you it is also for students who want to switch fields so i always wonder and i always worry for people who think that they are not suitable for this career but they still keep on dragging themselves no you can find out where you can go for for that you need an expert and we can be a mentor for you for that at the end, you will make the right decision and you will get your Ikigai. What is the outcome? Power pack skills, identification of what after bachelors. 90% of engineers and bachelors till the fourth year or third year are not sure what they want to do in your career ahead. That's so saddening. That is what I see every day with students. They want someone else to answer. No, we don't think that is the right way. You have to unleash your shine. So if I get you exposed to different technical skills, to different avenues, exposures, projects, internships, you would automatically know what you want to do, guys. You would decide for yourself whether right or wrong, it would be your decision. Job relevant you would be you would get good admissions if you have a good profile and at the end the most important you would be very high on confidence that's what we promise you with pbm if you come on board with education street and with me the prizes i don't know why it has shrinked the table but the prizes are going to be uh, normal prizes are ten thousand for this the entire duration of your bachelor's but we have an offer for all the webinar attendees and it is dirt cheap it is at seven thousand guys so I feel wherever you are, early the best. So if you are in your first year, the more the better. But wherever, whichever uh, semester you are, you need to start with PBM because we have made difference to a lot of students and we have actually made seen results into it. So how does PBM work? There's going to be a primary profile counseling, which I as a counselor and other senior counselors would sit back to understand what your goals, agendas, and your current setup is. After which we set a roadmap for next three months, skills, certification, internships, and activities to capitalize your profile. So we give you a roadmap and we customize what is suitable for you. So it is not that I can give the same thing to 1000 students. No, it doesn't work. 
every student is going to be very individually handled and it is going to be a customized proposition and then every after that three months or two months we keep building on those skills as they are achieved so this goes on and on until your bachelors and at the end we are with a very power fact profile which will either get you a good job you would be able to start your own thing be an entrepreneur or actually go for a master's degree so whatever you decide you are ready general faqs lot of courses and certification available online what will you do extra in this exactly my point the moment i decide i want to learn ethical hacking just go today and find out you will get around 1000 options for ethical hacking which is a suitable one which is the right body which is the right one which is going to be available and acceptable widely across world we will be able to help you because we have already done that uh, uh search for you the price is going to be for the entire duration so this is also a question it is not going to be for each year it is going to be for your entire bachelors and pbm is delivered wherever you are if you're not from mumbai or even if you're from mumbai technology is going to pay the major role for us to deliver this profile building for you so i hope that clears it bringing me to another aspect we as counselors also support students who want to go abroad for masters so if i am looking out to go to us for cyber security or hacking or whatever new zealand ireland canada wherever germany we are going to also support you to counsel and get you the gres or the um ilts or tofl whatever is required so we also have expert matter for counseling for studying abroad so this is also very important aspect now a, a certificate of appreciation so all the attendees get a certificate from us uh, as shown as a sample here uh, we would surely get, send a soft copy in case if you don't get us please get in touch with us we would love your kind feedback and appreciation by tagging us this on your insta story at education street or fb story because this will really really help us to feel that we are serving the serving you rightly and at the end i would love if you have any queries or doubts you may write in the chat room or write to me at ankita at educationstreet.in i would love to have you on board with education street uh, for pbm or studying abroad counseling whatever is in your mind please 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 like us on our facebook our instagram and our youtube channel and please join us on our telegram group which we have shared in the chat room again so hopefully this session was useful and i have brought about good avenues and career paths for you and now i would love to uh, have your comments feedbacks because that is what will help me to get better day by day okay hello people i would love to have your questions and feedbacks um okay thank janvi for your kind words thank you i'm glad you liked it so a lot of career paths discussed by at least this uh, so far iot hacking uh, blockchain technology um uh, 5g you know there's so many things which i've discussed so i hope you find your uh, you know goal and thing cyber security of course yes uh, somia cyber security is very important i mean how much ever i say uh, and dwell over it we all know how important it is so i hope you can um, you know uh, find this across so mamta is saying uh, is hardware difficult or whether it is suitable for women of course uh, it is uh, widely suitable for women as well because uh, you always have a core team or uh, you know the actual uh, hard work to do those things or setting up those things by someone but of course to learn that thing you need to start and you know do things on your own but it is suitable for everybody and i don't think so there's any way it is not suitable for women because there are already a lot of women behind it i think because we have a good analogy of how things should be placed and how it should be better so i would say it is certainly very suitable for women as well okay 
thank you thank you so much for such kind feedbacks and positive feedbacks thank you so much thank you so much lohit i am so glad to hear this that first you had doubts and now you have real confidence on us so i'm very very uh, you know i think this is the best comment so far and i'm very happy uh, with this comment so lohit thank you see you soon uh, on board with pbm and i would love to take a one on one session with you thank you mamta for your kind words uh, uh i mean wonderful teaching thank you so much makes means a lot uh really really thank you okay so somya is saying hardware core job opportunities are usually lesser with respect to it during campus placements especially in small tier uh, cities and stuff uh, so uh, uh, somya as you uh, heard me even i was uh, thinking the same that you know there would be lesser jobs and that's why there are lesser students who go for hardware but the supply and demand is what is to be understood here okay so i have of course there are more jobs for software okay but there are more takers for it also okay but here hardware there are good amount of jobs but there are lesser takers for it that means that's an opportunity see something being very big and popular of course there are a lot of people who are attracted towards it so there is a lot of competition already but here as it is a neglected area and a lot of people have their own doubts or you know um, concerns about it they are actually not giving that due importance however it is so damn important to companies and hence i would say you just go on indeed or sap and you will be able to find out that the amount of hardware jobs which are already there in the portals thank you thank you so much guys for such kind feedback thank you so much so uh, lohit is asking about studying abroad if we help in pbm so pbm is to help you and empower you with skills and knowledge and uh, profile building uh, studying abroad of course we help you with studying abroad also but that counseling would be separate sorry i cannot give my number but my email id is given to you it's ankita at education street dot in and my office mobile number is done so if you have anything please connect with me on email and uh, i would certainly have a call arranged with you uh, post that or my team members would get in touch with you you can leave a message for me and i can get in touch with you as well uh, but of course with this webinar series going on it's a little tied up i have in fact spoken with few students who wanted to talk to me so i will remove time but in case if you want to talk to me email would be the best thing uh, and my team members you can you know receive or give message across for it but the first session which normally you would enroll with us for pbm will be happening with me so i just want to bring that across that in case if you are looking out to um, join pbm you would see me at your stages guys please like us on our instagram and facebook page that would be really really kind because uh, that will help us to be uh, connected and as i spoke i'm going to have industry speakers and videos been uploaded on our pages so i would really really like that if you can uh, be connected to us and please do join us on our uh, instagram uh, email id uh, uh, chat room also because we share a lot of resources which could be useful and helpful for your uh, growth and prospects ahead thank you sapnel so much thank you so much for your kind words thank you somya thank you thank you so much guys thank you raza
any more questions all right i think the session uh, went well and you really appreciated it thank you so much tomorrow being sunday so it would be an off but i'll see you on monday for the next uh, session that we have it's for mechanical engineering so uh, i and there are a lot of good topics supply chain industrial engineering and logistics and other areas so in case if you're not from that stream but you want to switch to new streams or understand new streams i would love to see you there as well so see you guys have a good weekend and utilize your team and be a riser see you soon